Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'd like to talk about the guideline ICHQ 3 a are two impurities in new drug substance. As introduced, I am working at the Hanmi Pharmaceuticals bio plant, and my responsibility includes a process development for recombinant gene therapy and analytical development pre uh, and pro preparation of the dossier. This is the agenda of my presentation, and it is following the content of the guideline itself. So I will be talking about the types of impurities and the rationale for reporting and control of impurities. And I will also go over analytical procedures and how we report the impurities content in the batches and the listing in the specification and the qualification. And when the guideline says qualification, it's about the assessment and control of safety. So this guideline covers the new drug substance or the DS utilizing the chemical synthesis. So here when I say DS, it is produced by the chemical synthesis. So that's the scope. So biological, biotechnological uh, products or peptide, oligonucleotide, uh, radiopharmaceutical fermentation product and uh, herbal products and others are not in the scope of this guideline. However, the basic concept of the guideline is applicable to these type of uh, drug substance, and therefore you can refer to these guideline for further information, even for those types of product. And there are two types of impurities in this guideline. Uh, the guideline explains the impurities from chemical aspect and a safety aspect. From the chemistry aspect, impurities, classification, identification, report generation, and listing and analytical procedures are discussed. And from the safety aspect, the how the impurities can be uh, measured and analyzed are discussed. Next one is the classification of impurities. The guideline categorizes impurities into three groups, which include organic, inorganic, and residual solvent. And for each category, as I will explain with the following example, following slide, there will be more details. Bioburden and endotoxin, the Impurities that can be caused by external contaminations are not dealt with this guideline and they are addressed in the GMP guideline. So other than that, anatomatric impurity and polymorphic forms are not addressed in this uh, guideline either. However, for this type of impurity or polymorphic form, if there is a safety concern, then as the guideline dictates, we can and we need to assess their safety profile and pro produce and submit the data to the uh, healthcare agency. The first type of the impurity is organic impurities, which include starting materials, byproduct, intermediate uh, degradation product, reagent, ligands, and catalyst. For starting materials, they are fed into the manufacturing process from the start. However, they may, they can uh, be, be remaining in the drug product or the drug substance. Byproducts is unintentionally produced materials and intermediate is the min intermediate that is generated during the process for the starting material and intermediate. They are controlled as impurities at the DP level, uh, particularly for the biosorical intermediate. During the manufacturing process, of course, they can be generated, but at the same time, 
even the potential of those uh, things are considered in the study. For degradation product, during the st stability testing, the degradation product may increase at the storage condition and reagent, ligands, and catalysts are also organic impurities. And what is unique here is that all the impurities relevant to the starting material from the development phase to the application phase, it is important to have the level or the concentration of those starting materials data continuously so that we can set the specification at the end of the day. And for the mass balance assessment, it is important to justify how strong the control is for the impurities at the DP level. More recently, it's not just about byproduct or degradation product, but more recently, the impurities that may be generated from the contact with the uh, closure or container, for example, benzoprine or NDMA. In order to measure them, long-term storage testing or stress, stress study, and these kind of studies need to be done. And for the long-term storage testing, we need to store the products to till the, the maximum storage period and then the mass uh, balance assessment or other various analytical methods need to be applied in order to monitor if there is any impurities remain. And that will help us a lot when we submit the dossier to the health agency. And next one is inorganic impurity. Like in the case of organic impurity, uh, it also have reagent, ligands, catalysts, and other than that, there are heavy metals and residual metals in organic salt and other materials including filter aid and charcoal. For filter aid and charcoal, they are used during the manufacturing process and their characteristics are very clear, so it's not, easy, not difficult to control. However, for other ones like reagent, ligand, catalyst, and heavy metals, they are basically the metal, so they are also controlled by the ICHQ3D on the elemental impurities. If I just share the Q3D, what Q3D is, all the materials that can be used, like including DS, material, container, closer, environment, everything related to the manufacturing process, if there is uh, the, we need to assess if there is any potential for the elemental impurities to be included, and we need to classify them into different classes and need to uh, come up with a strategy to control them. Of course, many of them can be eradicated or eliminated during the process, but at the same time, uh, for the impurities that will not be in that case, then we need to clearly uh, describe how we control them in our submission. The next one is the residual solvent. Q3C also uh, deals with the residual solvent. So there is a separate guideline. Residual solvent is also categorized into inorganic and organic. Of course, the most often used solvent would be water. So what we pay a lot of attention is organic solvent because it includes water. The table is from Pfizer. The Pfizer uh, provides the guideline to select the solvent. ICHQ3C provides the class, and for the undesirable ones, it would be class one or two for prepared and usable. 
class 2 or class 3 solvents. If you use the class 3 solvent only, then even if they may reside a little bit, but you can uh, control them. But if not, if you use other different classes, then you need to clearly explain the digital of the residual in the uh, submission and how you control them. Then next one is how we report and uh, control the impurities. For organic impurity in the submission, these contents need to be included. As I mentioned earlier, impurities may arise from the manufacturing process or from the S, but at the same time, in theory, theory theoretically, they can be in uh, they can be present, and all these potentials should be described. And those impurities, whether it is from the chemical synthesis or from DS, or whether it is a degradation product, those need to be explained. And for the analytical uh, method, those methods need to be well described. And from development till the commercial phase, all batches or the impurity data from all batches need to be provided. Particularly, the stress test and the impurities from the stress test that is described in the ICHQ1A uh, need to be included in order to show the stability. And representative commercial batch should be need, used to produce the impurity profile and also the developmental batch. Impurity profile need to be provided so that we can compare them. So that comparison will explain that there is no specific increase in a certain impurity and there is no new impurities added in the commercial batch. And this uh, table on the slide is the attachment one from the guideline. This is a threshold. There are numbers, but there are the general guideline. If a certain impurity has a specificity, and then we need to uh, provide a scientific justification for a certain cases, the maximum daily dose, if it's lesser than two zero per day, then reporting threshold would be 0 0.05%. Identification threshold would be 0.10. And qualification threshold 0.15%. So when you think about two gram per day, if it's higher than that, reporting thresholds 0 0.03, identification threshold 0 0.05, and qualification threshold uh, 0.05 percent. And I will talk about attachment to later on, and I will provide more details then. So let's say if a certain impurity goes over, exceed identification threshold, which is 0.10%, then there should be characterization of that impurity. And all the impurities exceeding identification threshold, uh, they need to be identified for this structure. And degradation product, if it goes over the identification threshold during the long-term storage testing, then that structure needs to be identified too. But if it's not possible to identify all the structures of all impurities, but still that trial and that failure need to be described in the submission. And if impurity is lesser than the identification threshold, 
then it is not required to identify the structure, but if we still do the ID or the identification, it will help us. And if the impurity is lesser than the identification threshold, As I said, the identification is not a requirement. However, still in this case, if the impurity may have some toxicological or toxic, uh, toxicological or pharmacological impact, then there should be some analysis to confirm that or assess that. Next one is the inorganic impurity. For inorganic impurities, they are usually can be detected using pharmacopoeia or other procedures. Their safety, safety can be also qualified. For inorganic impurities, whether they should be included in the specifications or not, CTD S two uh, S uh, thirty two would be referenced. The acceptance criteria can be set based on the pharmacophia or well-known safety data. Especially in case of organic solvents, as explained before, ICHQ3C uh, has the details and the procedures. If you're using only class 3, LOD can be used for control. And it's roughly um, not more than 5,000 ppm, so no big issues. But for class 1 and class 2, ICH Q3C must be followed for control and for setting the specification. Next, about analytical procedure. The analytical procedure, the important point is that it should include documented evidence that the analytical procedures are validated and suitable for the detection and quantification of impurities. The concentration level must be detected and the analytical method must meet those criteria. Please refer to ICH guidance for analytical validation. And as explained in attach one, there was an explanation about the threshold. So the method with the best resolution is not always necessary. The use of lower precision technique can be acceptable. Two decimal places for thre threshold does, is not necessary. And when submitting um, documentation for approval, analytical procedures for commercial product should be compared with those used in development. And in attachment one, I talked about the reporting threshold and the quantitation limit for the analytical procedure should be not more than the reporting threshold. Reference standard used in the analytical procedures for control of impurities should be evaluated and characterized according to their intended uses. Next, for each batch, how to report impurity content. Any analytical data should be provided all together. Clinical, non-clinical safety, toxicity, and batch release for commercial product. All of the submitted data must have quantitative results. 
it has to be presented numerically and not in general terms such as complies meet limits. From non-clinical to clinical, any impurity information must be in a single table for easy comparison. If there is a separate section which makes it difficult to compare, during the uh, review process, it could be an issue and regulatory authority may ask for these separate and additional information. Any impurity at a level greater than the reporting threshold should be reported. And when reporting, in case of below 1.0%, two decimal place, above 1%, reported one decimal place. Results should be rounded using conventional rules. As I explained before, tabulization of data is recommended. Impurities should be designated by code number or by an appropriate descriptor such as retention time. So impurity with retention time X. This is important to have uh, this code number. And in HPLC integration, repeated unknown must be avoided. For example, in RP chromatography and ion chromatography, impurities unidentified are often called um, impurity 1, 2, and 3. But there are possibilities that during the uh, review, impurity 1 from RP HPLC and impurity 1 from ion exchange could be uh, considered as uh, the same impurity. So if possible, it is important to give unique identification for each impurity. All impurities at a level greater than the reporting threshold should be summed and reported as total impurities. In our case, Regarding uh, found impurities, we use total other than main. So uh, sum of all the peak, uh, excluding main peak, is the um, standard that we use. Table at the bottom is what was explained in attachment one threshold. For example, daily dose maximum 0.05, identification and qualification 0.1 and 0.15. According to the measured results, the follow-up actions are explained. You can do the calculation. When raw result is lower than 0.05, lower than reporting threshold, and smaller than maximum daily intake, no additional action is required. But when the raw result in the fourth case exceeds qualification threshold and TDI 0.5 maximum dose, when it exceeds TDI and it exceeds um, 0.15, identification and qualification both are required. And with the second example, maximum daily dose uh, smaller than 2 gram, reporting threshold, ID and qualification are explained. Qualification threshold is set at 1.0 milligram TDI. 
when it's smaller than 0.05, no specific identification or safety action required. But in the second case, 0.124%, it exceeds ID threshold, but uh, it need to be compared to qualification threshold. Maximum daily dose and 2% is calculated. When TDI value is compared, ID must be done, but for the qualification, it's not required. Next, listing of impurities in specifications. Specification must include impurities throughout the manufacturing process and which can remain in final product. In preparing for the specification and when we do the listing of impurities in specifications, the selection of impurities in the new drug substance specification should be based on the impurities found in batches manufactured by proposed commercial process and individual impurities with specific acceptance criteria should be included in the specification are referred as specified impurities. Specified impurity structure uh, might have been identified or not. For specified impurities, not only uh, the identified ones, when the structure is identified or not, if it exceeds ID threshold, everything must be listed in specification. If you want to for example, for toxicity and pharmacological um, impurities and quantitation limit and detection limit to detect concentration to explain safety must be explained and the uh, information to justify that uh, claim must be included. As mentioned before, on uh, when the structure of uh, specified impurity um, is uh, found, unique code name must be given rather than calling it as unknown. So simply put, for all identified impurities, please give them identification. Make the best effort to give identification and include all these efforts into the uh, submitted document for approval. In case of acceptance criteria, uh, it should be established based on data that can be representative of commercial products. And the increase of the impurity uh, during um, stability tests and whether the decomposition product can be found must be included. The safety at the highest concentration of impurity must be evaluated and reflected in the specification. When there is a uh, significant variation in batch to batch impurity level, it indicates that the manufacturing process is not adequately controlled and validated and there could be additional challenges regarding the manufacturing process. For new drug substance specification, 
organic um, residual organic impurities residual solvents and inorganic impurities must be included so there has been multiple categories that i explained during the uh, development process all of the identified impurities must be considered when you uh, apply for the uh, approval these data must be included evaluation must be done and it, when there is a, a impurity exceeding id a threshold the characterization uh, must be done This is for a specified impurity and how we select the specification. For a certain specified impurity, we first check the um, concentration. And then calculate upper confident limit. These two values are uh, added. Upper confidence limit is usually plus 3 SD. So mean plus 3 SD is the value. If this impurity um, is a degradation product uh, during stability test, depending on the answer, the path change. If it's yes, estimate maximum increase in impurity at retest date using data from relevant accelerated and long-term stability studies. So the maximum um, concentration and mean plus uh, three SD if this value, is it higher or lower than the safety identified concentration? If it's higher, then this value becomes specification. If uh, compared to the safety data, if this value is lower, mean plus 3 SD, an increased amount added, the total will become specification. If this impurity does not increase during uh, stability, then this value is compared to the uh, con level in safety. If it's higher than safety, threshold becomes specification. If it's higher, and if it's lower, the mean plus 3SD will become a specification. Next, safety evaluation. Safety of the impurities. The qualification uh, was uh, already introduced in the beginning. It is about biological safety to make sure that impurity does not have any toxicity. So this qualification is the process of acquiring and evaluating data that establishes the biological safety of an individual purity. The acceptance criteria must uh, be based upon the specification that safety is evaluated. Any impurities for new drug product
impurity that could come from uh, drug substance and uh, from samples used in non-clinical studies. These are possibilities. So from non-clinical and clinical results, if there hasn't been any um, adverse event or toxicity, these types of impurities, uh, we can say that their safety is evaluated. In developing manufacturing process for non-clinical and clinical samples, there are cases to have maximum purity for study. But ironically, with this highest purity when it's used for clinical and non-clinical, in um, setting impurity specification in a later stage, it could be uh, very difficult. So in these cases, uh, specified impurities uh, could be generated or we could use a sample with enough contents of that specific impurities for additional safety and toxicology tests. So a uh, manufacturer must make a decision strategically um, to see which uh, option works better. This is an attachment to a guideline. Um, when um, safety uh, testing is required and when uh, evaluation is required, so it's a decision tree for identification and qualification. First, we start whether the structure is uh, identified or not. If the structure is identified, and when there is a potential risk to human, the, we have to compare it to the level of uh, safety, uh, which could be a risk to human. If uh, it cannot be lowered to that standard, additional toxic toxicity test is required. General genotoxicity um, test can be used. After the safety test, when it is used for clinical, uh, we have to check whether there is toxicity. And depending on the result, we can either say that it's safe or uh, the uh, additional activity required. This slide is a glossary uh, from the guideline. So this is all I prepared for today's presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, um, now I, I will take questions. From the guideline and its contents, it's about whether exceeding identification threshold or not. Depending on that, specifications are set and characterization is done. But as I mentioned a couple of times already, for all of the impurities, if possible, please do the identification. If concentration is higher than certain level, characterization must follow. Not only the impurities from the actual uh, process, theoretically possible byproducts must be considered. For byproduct, It is difficult to uh, provide scientific explanation. In silico is another way to provide relevant information. So any potential impurities could be checked. If there are impurities with potential genotoxicity, those impurities could be uh, generated and through AIMS test we can check whether there is actually genotoxicity or not. In case of genotoxicity, ICHM7 is a relevant guideline. 
another um, point to consider is that all of the impurities safety evaluation must be done in order to do so clinical and non-clinical samples and uh, impurities concentration in these samples must be checked so during the development uh, process uh, please have these uh, data to make sure you have a um, complete set of uh, document for application so is there any questions well, first of all, I'd like to appreciate um, Mr. Sekun Kim for a great presentation. I'd like to accommodate the questions from the on-site participants first. If not, if there is no question, I'd like to check if I have, if we have the questions from the online participants. Yes, uh, we will provide you the question here so you can see it. So this is the Q&A session following the presentation. So the, can you just share the question first so that everybody can listen to the question? Well, I am not the expert in the non-clinical or toxicology study, but the question is for the impurities or the toxicology, toxicity study of the impurities, is there anything that we need to consider uh, what we decide or set the, the qualification uh, criteria or the threshold? As I said, I am not an expert in the toxicity study, but uh, we can think of the general rapid test or BSA, PK. These are the ones that we can consider, but I'm not in the right position to answer to that question. Thank you very much for your response. We have another question coming up, so we'd like to share that first. Kyungsun Kim asked this question. Considering the level of impurities in qualification, do you uh, say, uh, select the uh, specification for clinical or uh, should cl uh, clinical uh, level must be the basis for qualification? We do not set the specification with the contents of impurities in clinical study when there is a certain level of uh, impurity during clinical the concentration and given on uh, value is used to set the safety uh, threshold impurity of volume and concentration itself is not a sole determinant for the safety uh, specification so the third question, please uh, check it and then uh, answer the question. There are many questions coming in. So this is not a synthetic product, but we are preparing for the I uh, for the investigation of drug qualification uh, for the phase one. So uh, how do we qualify that? And how do you? control the impurities in the clinical phase one product. Impurities identification profiles may not be fully obtained for the phase one. And before we move into the phase one, maybe we do have only the non-clinical phase specimen or the samples. So we do not have a very clear and full qualification profile. So now, so it's not possible to control impurities at an individual level, but the main peak purity and total impurity would be the parameters that we control. So for impurities, we consider the acceptable criteria for toxicity for a certain impurity and we consider also check whether that 
total impurity is arriving or closing to that level or not. Pre-IND, when you have the uh, meeting with the authority for pre-IND, you can discuss specification for the pre-IND impurity control so that uh, you can confirm whether the uh, regulatory uh, body accepts it or not. So the main peak, the control of the main peak would be sufficient for the clinical phase number one. But as we move to the phase two, then identification threshold or the impurities higher than the impurity uh, identification threshold uh, need to be identified. And before phase three, I think a lot of works will be done. The final ID and characterization should be done uh, before you submit the application to the health agency. So depending on the phase of the clinical trial, ID or characterization of the impurities and the timeline for those activities need to be set. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your response. I appreciate the presenters. Hegong uh, Kim, once again, thank you.